Hi, this is Roggy Horner, and first off, I apologize, I've got a nasty head cold, so yeah, I know I sound terrible, but this is some really good information pertaining to those of you that have been asking me about the Between the Greens 5-minute setup on my charts. Now, a lot of you have been asking that once you have the 13, the 21, the 34 period, uh, and 55 period exponential moving averages on the chart, how can you also keep the green grab candle? So I'm going to get right into that. What you're looking at right now is a five-minute chart of the Euro-Yen. It's, it's Sunday afternoon. We quite, quite haven't gotten the market open with the kind of price action that we'd need to see any kind of clarity on the five. I was really hoping for a trending five-minute chart, but this particular pair seems to have the best shot of maybe finishing and, and really completing a transition to a 12 to 2. So we'll start here. 5-minute Euro-Yen. Of course, you know the Between the Greens starts with a 12 to 2 o'clock angle on the 34 EMA wave or a 4 to 6 o'clock angle on the 34 EMA wave. We haven't got it here, but let's move on. The setup, for those of you that are not familiar with a Between the Greens setup, is to have four exponential moving averages on the chart. I'm going to show you how to set those up right now. Now you don't need to remove the grab. We're just going to modify it before we add the 13, 21, 34, and 55 period exponential moving averages. Here's how you modify it. Right click the chart and go into the indicators list. Once you're there, you can see the three custom indicators. Now I'm using the Interbank FX version of the platform. What makes this version really nice, and I'm going to bring up the navigator right now, is the custom indicators are already installed. If you don't, if you're not on this platform, that's fine too. You can head over to my blog at roggyhorner.com, do a search for Grab 2.0, and you can download it from here. I will say, if you are not comfortable, with installing the files and unzipping them and so forth yourself, I recommend just go ahead and download the IBFX. Even if it's just the demo, you don't have to go through all this process. All right, and I'll also mention I just simply don't have the time to to offer you know support on on this. So I apologize for that, but that's just uh, you know kind of the limitations. So uh, move forward knowing those are the limitations with manually installing it. So once you've added the B, the G, and the R, the blue, the green, and the red, to the chart, obviously this is what you've got. Now, as I was mentioning before, we're going to just do a quick modification. So just highlight the first of the grabs and click Edit. And you'll notice that each one, there's four tabs, Common, Input, Colors, Visualization. You're going to the third tab, and the third tab will have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, inputs. We're going to actually modify the, the fourth, number four, to be white. Now the reason I'm making it white is because my background on my chart is white. Now if you're using a different background on your chart, that's the color you're going to want to make the uh, number four criteria on that tab. So you can see here I've got a white background, a black foreground, and my grid is this Gainsborough. So it's really faint, but I can still see the grid. So this is the way I've got my colors set up and properties. Let's get back over to that indicator list. So again, I went to the G, that, that four criteria was white because again, my background is white. Let's go to R, same thing. You can see here, these are all the red. I'm going to go down and choose white, and you can see one by one, these are going to disappear. And then finally, we're going to go over to blue, Make that white, and they should simply disappear. Now, you notice they haven't completely disappeared. They've just kind of blended in the background. You can still see them here a little bit, but it's nowhere near as dominant as when it was in the blue, the green, and the red. Now, what's nice about this is now that we're going to start to add our indicators, and you're going to do so by adding four moving averages. The first is going to be a 13-period exponential moving average on the close. I like it in lime green. 
that's the first. Now, if you want to make them a little thicker, that's really up to you. I do like them a little bit thicker when I'm setting up the between the greens. You can see the thickness there. It's the next one up. I'm going to go back up to insert indicators, add my second moving average, which is a 21 period. By the way, realize these are still all exponential moving averages based upon Fibonacci numbers, right? There's my green. I'm going to go back here, insert, and, and I'm going up to the menu. I know you, it's just out of sight, but hopefully you guys know how to add indicators. I'm sure you wouldn't be at this point if you didn't already know how. The, four, the third indicator is exponential 34 period. This will be your red. And finally, the last indicator, again a moving average, exponential. This one's set to 55 periods. And I like to make this one that maroon color. It's kind of a burnt red. So I can differentiate just by color the moving averages very easily. So again, it's very important that you have the right moving averages. 13 period exponential on the close. 21 period exponential on the close. 34. And 55. And those are your between the greens. And you can see what I've done is we've kept the grab candle so I can see the organization or lack of organization for the momentum, the sentiment and momentum. And I can also have the between the greens set up here. And I, I really like this setup. Now, let me mention, for whatever reason, you have to actually save this chart. So you need to go to File, Save As, and then actually save this chart because if you don't save it the next time you try to come back to it even if you save it as a template for whatever reason I've noticed it just simply does not want to so let, let's say I've, I've just done that at a, I just saved this as a template you see that and let's say I go to the Aussie Yen notice how the grab comes right back so even if I go to the template, notice it's still still there. So you have to save it. So what I'm going to have to do now is I've got a file. I'm going to open that chart that we that we saved as the Euro Yen 5. And that's the way you're going to have to do it. I don't know why that is. I can't even begin to fathom why that doesn't uh, quite work the way we wanted to but that seems to be the situation so if you're anything like me you save your your views as a profile by the way I, I want to mention that what I do with my profiles is I have six to eight charts per window and I save it as a profile so I, so the Aussie yen is one profile I'll have the 5 15 30 60 240 daily on one profile. I'll do the same thing for every single pair. That way when I pull up a profile, I'm looking at all the time frames that I would consider for an entry for that profile in one view. So what I'm saying is for each profile, make sure you go in and save the five minute setup when you have the between the greens the way you like it. That way when you bring it back up again, you won't have the grab moving averages on top of your chart once again, because it is very convoluted as you can see. All right, so I hope that helped. I hope my cold didn't uh, ruin the video, but I wanted to get this on video because this is something I've been getting a lot of questions on because you guys have noticed that I have the between the greens layout with the grab candles, but without the wave. All right now don't forget, the wave still has a very important part of this setup. The wave is what confirms the correct environment for this strategy to begin with. Don't forget, this is a trend-following strategy just on a very short-term time frame.